بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm so on so on Saturday we discussed the ayah in Surah Tawbah where Allah subhanahu wa taala he said فإن تابوا وأقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة فإخوانكم في الدين I mean, it said that this ayah um, is of course referring to the mushrikun that if those who associate partners with Allah if they repent from their shirk and they establish the prayer and give the zakat then they become your brothers in faith and uh, we discussed the importance of salah and some aspects with regards to salah and how we can improve our salah uh, today I want to move on to the second pillar that was mentioned there um, alongside salah and that is zakah Zakah has become what many of the scholars would say the forgotten pillar the pillar that we as Muslims don't pay that much attention to we don't know too much about uh, we kind of guesstimate when it comes to our zakah um, but zakah of course is an important um, pillar when it comes to our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we talk about these pillars these are the foundations of our Islam of our submission to Allah they are based on these five pillars and the zakat of course it has a communal aspect to it it's about supporting the poor and needy in your community that's one of the key functions of zakat but zakat what does it actually mean it means purification Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Qad aflaha man zakaha. the root word of zakat is zakka yuzakki which means to purify uh, and Allah when he talks about purification uh, in the verse in Surah Al-A'la he's talking about purifying the heart but when we give our zakat it's a means of purifying our wealth it's a means of purifying our wealth and when we think about zakat we have to understand that it's a responsibility it's an obligation uh, and it's the right of the poor it's the right of the needy um, and it's mentioned over 30 times in the Quran and what's interesting is when you look at zakat being mentioned over 30 times in the Quran 28 times it comes right next to salah so when Allah talks about those who are successful, He says those who establish a prayer and give zakat. And many ayat like this where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions salah, He mentions zakat alongside it. Why? Because as we mentioned, salah is your individual obligation to Allah and your connection with Allah. Whereas zakat is about what? It's about the community. It's about those who are suffering around you, those who are in need. Um, and when you think about again this pillar of zakat, we know that uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, when he was the Khalifa there were individuals and tribes who said we're not going to give the zakat and Abu Bakr got very angry yes and like I said you know those who downplay zakat and don't think uh, you know it's, it's important there were those that did this at the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. and Abu Bakr he said Wallahi la man farraqa bayna salati wa zakat he said I swear by Allah I will fight anyone who differentiates between the salah and the zakat just like salah is a pillar, in the same way zakah is a pillar. When the Prophet والسلام, he sent Mu'adh bin Jabal to Yemen, he said to Mu'adh bin Jabal that invite the people to testify that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. This was the call. If they accept this, then tell them that Allah has commanded them to pray five times a day. If they accept this, then tell them uh, the obligation of zakat paraphrasing the hadith that the, the wealth is to be taken from the rich and be given to the poor so this was the instruction that Mu'ad was given when he went to Yemen to go to a new community Tawheed, Salah and Zakat time and time again my dear brothers and sisters they come together and the Prophet Ali he also described the Zakat as being a Burhan it's an evidence yes it's a testimony of your faith when you're giving that which you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's an evidence of your iman and your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, there are severe kind of uh, warnings for the one who doesn't give the zakat. In the famous hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he described that anybody who's been given wealth, yes, and all, to varying degrees, we've all been blessed with wealth. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the one who does not pay zakat on it, then what will happen? On the day of judgment, his wealth will um, be presented to him in the form of a snake. And this snake will encircle itself around the neck of the individual who was given wealth, but he never paid zakat on that wealth. 
And what will the snake do? It will bite the individual and say, Ana maluk, ana kanzuk. That I'm your wealth, I'm your treasure, that you did not pay your zakat on. And one thing we have to understand, you know when that, that money is due, that money is due, the zakat is due, it might still be in your bank account, but it's, no, it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. It's in your account, but that belongs to those who are deserving to receive the zakat. A few quick basics when it comes to zakat. We can't, of course, go through the whole calculation process, but I want to mention just a few points um, when it comes to zakat and what we have to bear in mind when we calculate our zakat. First and foremost, zakat is an obligation upon who? Upon anyone, any Muslim, who is above the nisab. What is the nisab? To just cut a long story short, yes, today's nisab figure is 347 pounds, 21 pence. Okay, how we get to that and what is it, silver, gold, etc., etc., is a discussion that we don't have the time for right now. But this figure, just bear this figure in mind. 347 pounds, 21 pence. And it changes slightly every day. Um, but this is the nisab. If you, as a Muslim, are in possession of uh, above 347 pounds, 21 pence, then zakat becomes an obligation upon you once a year has passed by. Now, um, another point that I have to mention is that when it comes to zakat, you should have a fixed date. Every single year, on this date, you go through the zakat calculation process. Yes, this is known as the spot method, that on your zakat date. So it's not that, you know, I'll just do it in Ramadan. Many people say, I'll give it any time in Ramadan. No, you should have a fixed date in Ramadan based on the lunar calendar. So it could be the 21st of Ramadan, the 15th of Ramadan, whatever it may be. But that fixed date is when you go through the zakat calculation process. What do you actually have to pay zakat on? Yes, we all know you have to pay zakat on cash. So any cash you have in your bank account, in your wallet, yeah, under your bed, whatever that cash may be, that, and you have it on your zakat date, zakat is due on it. Okay, it has to be added together. Whatever currency it's in as well, you might have uh, you know, uh, different currencies, you might have some uh, rupees, you might have some um, riyals, whatever it may be, you add it together on your zakat date. Gold and silver, whichever form it's in, Yes, now there's a discussion amongst the scholars that do you have to pay zakat on gold if it's used for personal use? According to the Hanafi Madhab, that zakat is due on gold and silver regardless, whether you use it as a personal item or not. And it's a very strong opinion and there's evidences that back that up. Also, those who have businesses. Yes, zakat is due. And how many times, subhanAllah, every year do people come and they say, I've got a business, I've never realized I had to be zakat on, on my business, assets, on certain assets. So cash in the business. Um, you know, when we think about, we say business asset, it's anything that you've purchased with the intention to resell. That, for zakat purposes, is basically classified as a business asset in that sense. That you've purchased something with the intention to resell, this now could become zakatable. It doesn't mean that you have to have a business name and you have to know. If you've purchased something and you might do it from home or whatever it may be, and your intention was to resell it, then this, uh, if you have it in possession on your zakat date, is zakatable. Receivable, stock, inventory, these are all things that businesses have to take into account. Yes, and go through a whole zakat calculation process. Shares. I know many brothers, mashallah, have invested and they have shares. So shares with the intention to resell, they are also zakatable. On your zakat date, uh, whatever the value of those shares are, would you would have to pay zakat on that. If you had the intention to resell, like those short-term traders, as soon as the price goes up, you sell it, um, then the whole uh, value is zakatable. Of course, if somebody has a long-term investment, um, then, you know, you have to look at the zakatable assets of that company. It can get a bit complicated. You can speak to me after if, that, if you're in that case. Money owed to you. So you might have somebody who owes you money. And your zakat date comes. That needs to be added to your zakat calculation. That's a zakatable asset that you have to pay zakat on. And then, of course, once you've done this, and you've gone through the process of adding up all of your zakatable assets on your zakat anniversary date, then you can deduct certain liabilities. Okay, so any debts or liabilities which are due or outstanding on your zakat anniversary, that can be deducted from your calculation. And then you will come with a figure. And on that figure, once you've added up your assets and you've taken away your liabilities, you will have a net figure. And that's what you pay. How much do you pay on that? What's that? Two and a half percent. Yes, mashallah. You guys are experts. Yes, two and a half percent is what you then pay on this. And then that is you fulfilling one of the pillars of Islam. You know, that is you. And, and like I said, take it serious, brothers and sisters. This is a pillar. This is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the right of the poor and needy. 
And it's not a light matter when it comes to zakat. Yes, we have to take it serious, go through the process, think about it. And whatever that figure is you give, and realize your, yani, the barakah that comes with it, the purifi purification that comes with it. So don't let Ramadan pass and, and just guess and think whatever it is, I'll just give it a little bit extra and hopefully you'll take care of it. No, go through the process properly. If you need help, then speak to myself, inshallah, I will help you with it. But let's take this pillar seriously. Let's ensure we give our zakat and those who are entitled to receive it are then helped through our zakat. Wa akhru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.